Hello, I'm Dr. Mark Scheuer, and this is an introduction to Persist 12. Persist 12 is available from every leading EEG manufacturer. Normally, you'd use Persist 12 as an integrated part of your manufacturer's EEG system. However, since each system operates a little differently, in this video I'll be showing you the standalone version. When used in conjunction with your manufacturer's system, Persist 12 analysis is performed automatically during acquisition and is available for monitoring and review using your manufacturer's standard database and review software. Persist 12 automatically indexes the records that are present in your environment. To open a record, I'll select Open from Database, and a list of records that are available will be displayed. I'll select a 24-hour recording for review. This record was previously processed, and what we are looking at now are the trend results for the first two hours. I'll explain the meaning of each of the trends, but the high-level benefit is that you can see major features of two hours of EEG on a single page. I'll page forward a bit to where you can see some interesting features of this record. I've moved four hours into the record to a page that shows two distinct seizures. Now I'll describe the various trends that you see on this page. The first trend is called the artifact intensity trend. It displays the amount of muscle, vertical eye, and lateral eye artifact present. The darkness of each line represents the amount of artifact. As you go through this record, it will be easy to see periods where the patient is likely awake or sleeping. For example, the patient is probably asleep prior to the first seizure with almost no muscle or eye movement. He appears to awaken or at least develop eye movements and increased muscle activity during the seizure and then drifts off into sleep or a postictal period of somnolence. The second trend is seizure detections. This shows the output of the Persist 12 seizure detector, here marked by red bars. On this page, two seizures are marked. The third and fourth trends are the rhythmicity spectrograms for the left and right hemispheres. The amount of rhythmicity is shown on a color graded scale at each frequency represented on the Y axis, the vertical axis, which here spans 1 to 25 Hz. Darker colors represent more rhythmicity. During this patient's seizures, you can see the rhythmicity suddenly increasing and moving from higher to lower frequencies. The fifth and sixth trends are the averaged FFT spectrograms for the left and right hemispheres. The FFT shows the amount of power in the EEG at each frequency. Both the rhythmicity and FFT spectrograms show that there is more power on the left side in this seizure. The FFT also shows the power moving to lower frequencies during the seizure. The seventh trend is the relative asymmetry spectrogram. This compares the power in homologous electrodes from the left and right hemispheres at each frequency. Blue indicates more power on the left side, and red indicates more power on the right side. Perfect symmetry would display as all white. During these seizures, the blue color indicates the increased ictal power on the left side at almost all graphed frequencies. The eighth trend shows the asymmetry indices. The yellow portion shows the absolute amount of asymmetry in the entire EEG. The green portion shows whether the overall asymmetry is weighted towards the left or the right. Below the axis is left-sided, while above the axis is right-sided. Again, we see the increase in asymmetry during the seizure and that the EEG is weighted towards the left side. The ninth trend is AEEG, or amplitude integrated EEG, for each hemisphere, overlapped. The left hemisphere is drawn in blue and the right hemisphere is drawn in red. AEEG provides a smooth measure of the amplitude envelope of the EEG. The patient's seizures are accompanied by EEG amplitude increases that are more prominent on the left. 
Finally, the suppression ratio shows a running indication of whether and how much the EEG is suppressed below a threshold amplitude. In this case, there is no significant suppression. This panel of trends is one of several that come with Persist 12. You can customize panels and create your own new panels. I'll quickly go through a few of the other panels. This is the Peak Envelope panel. It has some of the same trends, but also includes a calculation of peak envelope, and at the bottom you can see a spike frequency trend. This is the Power by Frequency Band panel. It shows the absolute amount of power in each frequency band in each hemisphere. Notice the peaks particularly in the low frequencies during the seizures. This is the Alpha Delta Ratios panel, which shows the value of these ratios for each hemisphere and for the anterior and posterior electrodes in each hemisphere. I've switched back to the Comprehensive panel to show you a couple of other features. We can change the duration of the display so we can see more details of the seizures. Changing to a 30-minute duration, we can see the progression of the seizure in more detail, with the evolution from high to low frequencies being very evident. I've switched back to two hours to show you the effect of Persist-12's unique artifact reduction on trend calculations. We have been viewing the trends with artifact reduction turned on. This removes substantial amounts of the effect of muscle, eye movement, and electrode artifacts from the trend calculations. Now I'll turn artifact reduction off. Notice how much noise now appears in the trends and that the seizure evolution is much less clear. Also on the right side of the page, you can see the large effect that electrode artifact is having in graphs depicting right hemispheric activity. The trends become so distorted in this section that they aren't representing cerebral activity at all. Without AR, all sorts of trend calculations can become much less useful since the artifact is admixed with the cerebral signals. I'll toggle AR on and then off again so you can see the difference. I'll leave AR off for a moment to demonstrate the effect on the EEG itself. Persist 12 includes a complete EEG review capability that is synchronized with the trends. Also, when Persist 12 is run in integrated mode, the trends are synchronized with your manufacturer's EEG display. I'll open a split screen to show the trends and the EEG at the same time. This is the mode that's usually used during EEG review. Now the EEG is shown on the left and the trends are shown on the right. By clicking on the trends, I can move the EEG to that portion of the record. For example, I can click on the beginning of the first seizure. I can then easily go to the second seizure. As so often happens, these seizures are very obscured by muscle and electrode artifacts. I'll go back to the first seizure onset to show you the effect of artifact reduction on the EEG. Notice how AR has removed the muscle artifact from the signal. The original signal with the artifact is shown in gray in the background. I'll turn AR off and on again so you can see the effect. The evolution of the seizure is much clearer on the EEG with the muscle artifact removed. The second seizure has substantial electrode artifact in addition to muscle artifact. Again, the cerebral activity is much clearer using AR.
Persist 12 also includes spike detection and review. I'll open the spike review window so that we can see what types of spikes were found in this record. Spike review summarizes and averages the spikes by spike focus. It also applies artifact reduction to make the spikes themselves easier to see. This summary view shows the number of detections that were marked at each electrode. For example, there were 577 detections at T3, 42 at T5, 13 at FP2, etc. The waveforms that you see here are the average of all the detections at that focus. To see the individual spike detections, we can double-click or select the tab for that focus. These are the clips of the individual spikes. We can scroll through them. We can do the same thing for spikes at T5. To see the spikes in the EEG, we can click on the time and the EEG will scroll to that point. By default, spike sensitivity is set at the minimum since there are often a very large number of spikes in a record. However, sometimes you might want to increase the sensitivity to see if any additional spike foci are evident using a higher sensitivity. You can do this dynamically without reprocessing the record by moving the sensitivity slider. Notice how the number of spikes at the locations has increased a bit. Increasing the sensitivity can, of course, also introduce more false positives, but this may be worth it if you are looking for rare spikes. Spike Review also includes a Report Summary feature that allows you to collect and display examples of the typical epileptiform abnormalities you've identified during the review process. Choosing the Final Report tab opens this display. Earlier, I marked several of the typical sharp waves found at T3. Final report first shows an average of those hand-picked examples, followed by the individual examples as one-second snippets. We can also choose to show voltage plots. This has been a quick tour of the major features of Persist 12. There are many more capabilities that we would be happy to discuss with you. All of the trending, detection, and artifact reduction you have seen is completely automatic. There are no patient-specific settings required. Just push a button and it works.